Hi, welcome back and in part three I'm really going to be working on the antlers then finalizing and doing the um, last bits of touching up and detailing here and there. So once again there's a lot of highlights on the antlers so I want to uh, put those in place first once again like I said on the other videos that helps me judge the tones of the other areas and there's obviously lots of twists and shapes shape forms on the antlers so I've got to be very wary of that careful that I put the highlights in the right places so that's what I'm concentrating on here you can see I'm using my marl stick as well just a bit of something like two by a quarter inch wood that's allowing me to rest my hand because I'm working um, completely vertically and it takes a bit of strain off the shoulders as well. So I'm just going to put these highlights in place and uh, then I can start working on all the lovely blue and uh, grey tones on these antlers. There's a lot of blue color light bouncing around so that's really influencing the antlers a lot and it's surprising uh, just how vibrant the blue is on certain sections where the twists of the antler are really in the perfect spot they are being influenced a lot by that blue. Now, if you're a beginner or novice and you're struggling to see um, colors perhaps perhaps like these antlers and all you're seeing is grays take the image your reference photo into an image editor and any of them will pretty much do don't need an expensive one and up the saturation a lot so it's usually in something like image adjust and, and look in there for like color or saturation or vibrancy that's what you're looking for and really grab the um, little button or whatever will be in there and pull it way up way over the top it'll look unnatural but it'll show you the true colors that are actually in there then you know what you're looking for and it's much more easy to see the little blue hints in certain areas of the antlers is kind of warm orange where the light is bouncing up from the floor and that's influencing it as well so that's one way to to see these colors much more easily and I'm going to carry on now blocking in the major shape with all its twists and turns then I'll start on the other side Now underneath here, that's where that warm colour is really starting to show up a lot. And it's because of that being offset against the, the blues that we get that twisting effect on there. So you want a grey, so you can use, I've used the black and uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And every now and again, I put in a little bit of cad orange as well. And that's giving me this warm grey obviously a little bit of titanium white but just a small amount because when you squint you can see it's only just slightly lighter than the blue above, above it and I'll come back onto this section and also it's highly influenced on the section right down by the the uh, skull where the, where the antlers connect with the skull there's a lot more of this warm tone there too
there's a lot of edge lighting, rim lighting in various areas where that extreme light is just catching the edge or just catching the back back side of it. So steady hand, fairly small brush. Once again I'll come back and refine the shapes a lot more because I've got a bit of texture to put on these antlers as well. But you can see even with that small amount it's adding quite a bit to the, the shape and form. And to really make this a very opaque white, I will come back and do a second layer after this first layer is dry. I'm not going to put a great deal of detail here. It's got to be in keeping with the rest of the, the painting. And as I mentioned, the whole goal was to have a bit more of a painterly um, look to it than I would normally do. I usually really push the details a lot, but I don't want to do that on this. I want to keep it a little bit fresher and looser. But I have still got to put, obviously, some detail in it just so it is in keeping with the rest of the head. But only a suggestion. Here the light is coming over the top where we've got those ridges, so it's just catching the tips of those as well.
And now with that first one pretty much done, just a bit of detailing left, I'm going to do exactly the same with the antler on the right hand side as we look at it. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.